Hey, I just recorded a webinar on my stock trading strategies. It's a good overview of my day swing and position trading strategies, the tools I use, the processes, that sort of thing. So what follows in this video is that webinar. Hope you enjoy it. All right, so welcome to my webinar for today, my stock trading strategies. My name is Tyler Ballhorn. I'm the stockscores.com founder and chief bottle washer. I uh, started stock scores about 20 years ago. I've been teaching people and providing tools for investors for 20 years now. I'm actually in my 30th year of trading, so this is a big milestone year for me. I started trading when I was a university student at the University of Calgary 30 years ago, and uh, it's been my passion ever since. I sort of started on a whim, but I, I love it a lot, and I love sharing what I do with other people, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So this presentation will take about an hour, typically. It depends on how many questions I get at the end. The overview for today is I will begin with just a little bit of background theory behind all of my strategies, why they work, what makes them effective, and what's the, the financial theory behind them. Once we've sort of covered that off, I'm going to show you the primary indicator I use for all of my strategies, whether it's a a longer term trading strategy or a very short term day trading strategy, I actually use the same basic concepts. And so even if you have no interest in being a day trader, there will be value in paying attention to what I go through in the day trading section because those same methods and skills are transferable to longer term trading as well. So I will cover off one day trading strategy, one swing trading strategy, and one position trading strategy today. And in the process, I will show you the tools and the processes that I use to find those trades. I will show you, um, you know, some market scans where we actually look for some opportunities. We'll take a look at some day trades from Friday and, you know, just try to emphasize some important skills that are are necessary to be successful in the market. And it's not just about picking the right stock, but so much of it is about risk management, knowing when to exit, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna highlight some of those things. To really learn everything that you need to know about my approach requires a little more time, so today is an overview. And for those of you that have more uh, desire to get deeper into what I do, I have some opportunities for you to learn those things, and I'll talk about how you can learn my strategies toward the end. And then finally, we'll take a look at your stock questions. So if you, you know, wanna know what I think of Air Canada, uh, I'll invite you to put in the symbol later. Don't put them in now because I'll miss, uh, I'll miss it. But later on, I'll invite you to put in your symbols and I'll try to answer some of those as I can. All right, let's uh, get to the first bit of information. So, Basic theory, so how do I approach the market? The reality is stocks and markets simply go up because people are willing to pay higher prices and they go down because people are willing to accept lower prices. Now what motivates people to pay more? And we'll focus on the buy side. Certainly you can make money from a market going down as well by short selling stocks or buying put options. But I'm just gonna focus on the buy side today. I have strategies for taking advantage of weak markets as well. So what motivates people to pay more? Ultimately, the most important thing is new information. But it's also a lot about crowd psychology. If there is optimism in a market, people will judge information more favorably than if there is pessimism. So right now we have a pretty optimistic market because it's been going up for a few months. And so people tend to judge the information they get from companies favorably. But in December, when the market was correcting and really looked pretty dismal, companies would release good news, but because the crowd psychology was negative, that good news was often not rewarded. Another thing that we shouldn't underestimate is short covering. And what I mean by that, for those of you who aren't familiar with shorting of stocks, a person tries to make money from a stock going down by short selling it. Short selling involves buying or sorry, borrowing shares from your broker, selling those shares, and then hopefully buying them back at a lower price so that you can return the shares that you have borrowed. That's the quick version or definition of short selling. And it's a great way to make money when markets get overbought or when markets are correcting. But oftentimes people get on the wrong side of a short and if the market goes up strong on a stock or an overall market, they have to 
cover their positions in a bit of a panic and maybe buy things at irrationally high prices. We actually see this a lot in day trading where stocks go up very quickly and the shorts get caught and they have to cover their positions and that makes the stock go up even more. And so if we can have an understanding of why people short, we can also predict those stocks that can sometimes go up very quickly on short covering. So ultimately, we need a way to identify stocks that investors are really willing to pay more for. And if we think back to just some of the basics, it's all about information. Now, the reality of the stock market is we don't, you know, not everyone is getting the same information about stocks at the same time. The market is in many ways unfair. There are some people that get better information than others. Uh, they, there's a variety of reasons for that. Sometimes it's they have a relationship with the company. Maybe it's a smaller cannabis stock and they just happen to know the president. And the president says, we're doing all these things and maybe telling that person things that he really shouldn't or she really shouldn't. Well, that better information gives that investor an advantage. Trading on that kind of information, which is trading on inside information, is illegal. It happens all the time, but it is illegal and some people get caught for it. Most people don't. But I actually don't think that that's what's most important. Inside information is really not what drives most stocks movement. What, what the thing that I focus on most is the fact that large investors with a lot of capital to invest do really in-depth research. They have expertise in different industries. They have knowledge and people that really know a lot about an industry. They may have connections with a company. They may help finance a company. There's a lot of reasons why these large investors get better information. And usually it's through hard work and being smart. And when they have that better information, they act in the market. And because they are large investors managing hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars, they take large positions. And when they take large positions, they leave a trail for us to follow. When these well-informed investors act in the market, they are, I mean, they have to buy the stock. And when they buy the stock aggressively, they create abnormal volume, they create abnormal price behavior. And that's what I follow because I don't wanna do the work. I'm not an expert in any one particular industry. I don't have contacts in an industry. I don't have the, the budgets to, you know, fly into a city and study a company in depth the way a large investment fund might. But it doesn't matter because I can simply follow what they do. And once you know what to look for, you can as well. You just have to know what to look for. So stocks that go into strong price trends, and we'll talk again just about upward trends for now, they almost always start their upward trends with abnormal trading activity. Now this abnormal trading activity is evidence that the buyers have found some motivation to pay higher prices. There's two components to abnormal trading activity. There's the price component, how much price changes relative to its normal price movement. And there's the volume component, how much the stock trades relative to what it normally trades. And it's very important to understand that it's all about what's relative to that stock's normal trading. You can't simply say that Let's look for stocks that are up 10% or more or 5% or more because a 5% move for Microsoft is very different than a 5% move for a $2 mining stock. You know, that lower price, smaller cap company can make 5% moves in an hour and it's not really that abnormal. So it always has to be judged relative to how the stock normally trades. So I'm going to take you through three examples today and at this point, I just want to emphasize the abnormal activity. I'm going to do a day trade, a swing trade, and a position trade. So this is the day trade example to start us off. This is a stock that we traded uh, last week on the 11th of April. What was that, Thursday? Uh, yeah, Thursday. And you can see that the volume traded for the day, this is, a, this is a two minute chart, by the way. So you can see up here, it says two minute. So each one of these bars represents two minutes of trading. And this stock started the day at about, well, between five and 550 and finished the day at $9. Huge move. Obviously, you can make a great deal of money if you can get on the right side of a stock like that. Even 1,000 shares, a, you know, a $5,000 investment turned into a $9,000 investment by the end of the day. And we see two to five of these kind of stocks a week, maybe not 
this big of a move, but last week we had some big moves in a few stocks where they, you know, earned 50 to 100% in a single day. Well, this stock, what stands out to me is the abnormal trading activity. It was abnormal compared to normal. This is the previous day here. And you can see the volume very low compared to the, the next day. And so that's what I look for. And I've written computer programs to look for that because I can't look at 7,000 stocks at once. So I get the computer to do most of the work and I'll show you how I do that later on today. So that's an example of a day trade from last week. This is an example of a swing trade from the last couple of weeks. This one actually started last Friday. And you can see that again, what gets my attention is the abnormal activity. So this was Thursday and this was Wednesday and this was Tuesday. Thursday and this was Monday last uh, not this recent week but the week prior and you can see it was pretty boring nobody cared about this company and then right here it came alive and the volume came alive and that was at roughly 40 cents a few days later it's hitting a dollar ten I don't know anything about this company I bought this stock last well not last week the previous week Friday I have no idea what they do but what I know is that the people that know the most, the people that study this company the closest, they told me that there was a reason to buy it. You know, there's no charitable contributions in the stock market. People buy because they think that the stock is gonna go up. And when people buy the stock aggressively, they're giving us something to look for. But it's very important to know the difference between buying here and buying here. And finally, a position trade. This one's still playing out. This is a pretty young position trade already, or as of now. But this is a stock that I uh, found on that particular day there. It made an abnormal price move, an abnormal volume move. And that stock since then, that was only two or three weeks ago, it went from 260 to 450. So as a longer term trade, one where you only have to look at the market once a day in the evening, perhaps. No great rush to act quickly. This one gave you four days to buy it before it started to move. And now it's moving quite nicely. And I think it probably heads towards $6 before it gets stuck. So in order to find these things, I had to come up with an indicator. And I'll tell you a little backstory. When I was in university many years ago, uh, 30 years ago, um, I, I took a class where we studied mergers and acquisitions on Wall Street. And what we were trying to find is if there was evidence in market activity that investors were trading on inside information. So this was back in the 80s. And there was a lot of insider trading back then. And a lot of people went to jail for it later on. But at the time, there was all kinds of insider trading activity. And what we wanted to do was look at these big transactions where one company was buying another company and try to determine whether there was evidence in the trading activity that uh, there was people that knew about those deals coming. Because obviously if, if a stock's trading at $10 and another company comes in and says, we're gonna buy your company for $20 a share, the stock's gonna make a big jump, right? When that news is announced. And if you knew that before the news was announced, then you could buy it at $10 and maybe it's 10 50 or something. And then when the news is announced and the stock jumps to $20, you've made a very quick and easy profit that is relatively risk-free, except for the risk of going to jail. So anyway, we studied all kinds of mergers and acquisitions. And what we found was that on almost every major merger or acquisitions, there was evidence in the trading activity that people were trading on inside information. And it really opened my eyes to this amazing opportunity because at the time, as a university student, I was hanging around the Alberta Stock Exchange trying to figure out what the next hot mining stock was or the next hot oil and gas stock was. And I used to hang out at the Alberta Stock Exchange because they had a real-time quote terminal, which were really hard to get at that time. They're very expensive to have. And I was a student, I didn't have a lot of money, right? So I'd hang out at the Alberta Stock Exchange and I would use their quote terminal to look for stocks that were moving. And what I wanted to find is the stocks that were moving abnormally. Because I knew from my university class that stocks that were behaving abnormally often had some news coming in the days or weeks ahead. And it was, it was kind of a funny story, but 
at the time, again, I didn't have a lot of money, so I couldn't afford to pay for parking necessarily or, or uh, take my car downtown Calgary where I lived. And so I would ride my bike downtown and I would hang out at the stock exchange for a few hours doing my research on their terminals, talking to the other traders that were hanging out there. And some of you may have done that back then. It was, there was a little community of, of traders that did that. They had three quote terminals that we could use. And so then I would uh, write down the list of the stocks that were behaving abnormally. I'd hop on my bike, I'd ride back home and I would download charts because back then we didn't have the internet like we have today. So I would download charts of each of those stocks and study the charts and see if they had some of the things that I still look for today. And that's how I paid my way through university is I um, bought and sold stock based on market action. I didn't do what I was being taught in business school. In business school, they were teaching me to study the fundamentals of the company and look at the growth and the you know all the stuff that we hear about. I wasn't doing that. I was trying to figure out what the insiders were doing and I used market activity to do that. So that's 30 years ago, 25 years ago now. And since then, I've created really powerful tools and processes so that I don't have to take so long to do it. Nowadays, I can find the stocks that are trading abnormally in two or three seconds. And I'll show you some of the tools that I use to do that. And so the primary indicator that I use for that is something called the Stock Scores Action Candle. It's uh, an indicator that I've created. The, the code or the, the algorithm within that indicator is something that nobody knows but me. And well, and one of my programmers, I guess, knows it because he had to write the code for it. But it's pretty simple but it looks for stocks that are doing abnormal things. And because computers are so powerful, I can go through 7,000 stocks and find a stock that is doing something abnormally for the last two minutes, for the last 15 minutes, for the last day, for the last week. The programming and the computer power will search for abnormal activity through millions of data records and allow me to really focus in on those stocks that have the best potential. And so that's what the stock scores action candle is all about. Now, what you see again on this chart is my action candle at work. Everywhere that you see a pink dot on this chart, there is an action candle. So I'll circle them in case it's a little bit hard to see. But the first one of the day on Thursday was there. There was another one there and there was another one there. This one was the only one worth buying. That was the first one of the day. To buy them later on in the day the, it was too late. So it's not enough to buy the action candle. You have to buy the right one. And I can teach you what to look for, but there's certain requirements that we look for in terms of, of buying these action candles. So that's a day trading example using a two minute action candle. But if we go back to our chart of VTL, we can see a 13 minute action candle there. Again, there's a pink dot on there. Now, again, this pink dot matters. This one does not. There's some other requirements that we have to look at when trading these things. Now, this is a stock scores chart. It doesn't actually plot a little dot on the chart. What it does, however, is we have a market scan tool where you can do a scan for stocks that have the requirements of an action candle. And on that particular day, sorry, I can make that a little smaller circle right there, we had abnormal price movement, abnormal volume. The market was telling us something was going on. And for the next, it's kind of interesting, for the next four days, people didn't really believe that because the stock actually went down for a couple of days and then it went up and then it kind of went sideways. And then more people learned about the information and then more people and more people. And as more and more people learn, as more and more get the information that the people back here had to justify their buy decision, stock goes up. Now, I don't want to be part of this group at the, at the well into the upward trend. I want to be part of the group that starts the trend. And believe it or not, I actually don't want to be part of this group either because that's the group trying to find the bottom. And you could argue that people were trying to find the bottom here and trying to find the bottom here. One of the hardest and most expensive ways to buy a stock is to try and find the bottom. You need to look for the signs that the bottom is changed or, or found and, and breaking the downward trend. And so you should never buy a stock because it's at its all time lows. You should buy a stock when it starts to move up from its lows. And that's what happened there along with the abnormal activity. And notice that there is some strong volume coming in here as well when the stock broke its downward trend line. That was actually another day um, where we uh, noticed it with, with the algorithms that I run.
All right, so that's an example of a day trade, a swing trade, and a position trade. Now I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the important rules about abnormal activity. Almost all stocks, and I mean at least 90%, almost all stocks that make market-beating trends, those that are moving up quicker than the overall market, they start their trends with abnormal trading activity. I have run computer um, simulations and, and analysis on thousands and thousands of trades, and I find that almost every stock that makes a market-beating trend does so on the heels of abnormal trading activity. The one exception is when a company is trading at $10 and the market is surprised by a buyout and it goes to $20 the next day. Sometimes uh, you don't see the abnormal activity right beforehand because there's actually that the deal is kept secret. It's not like back in the 80s when those mergers and acquisition deals had a lot of shared information. They keep the information a little tighter these days with those big buyouts. But other than that, and those really aren't stocks that are trending, you know, it's not a trend when a stock is trading here and the next day it's trading here. A trend is a stock that does this, right? And what we want to do is buy it here so that we can sell it here. So almost all stocks that make market beating trends start their trends with abnormal trading activity. However, not all stocks that show abnormal trading activity make market beating trends. And so we need to have some ways to filter out the stocks that have the best potential. And so earlier I said that we don't buy every action candle. We're selective about the ones that we buy. So now I'm going to take you through three strategies. We'll do my day trader strategy first. And I'll try to show you some of the things that I think about. So for my day trading strategy, I want to find stocks making two-minute action candles. So we're watching the market very closely. The computer is actually watching it closely. I, there's no way that I could ever do this by myself with the, how fast the markets move. It's just... You know, you end up getting in a lot later. I, I, I get into stocks far earlier than most people because I have these computer algorithms that find these things for me. What we're looking for, what the computer's looking for, is two-minute action candles. And when I see one, I assess the chart to see if my other rules are met. I want to see stocks that are surprising the market, uh, not stocks that are already well into their upward trend, but stocks that nobody cared about, and then all of a sudden there's buying coming into them. Because the simple idea here is there's buying coming into them because something's going on. And then when I see that, I assess the risk of the trade. So I look at the chart and I determine where my support zones are, where the market will prove me wrong. You know, today on the radio show with, with Michael Campbell, he talked at the top of the show about listening to the other side of the market or the other side of the argument and paying attention to what what might prove you wrong. And so for every trade I make, I always think about what will prove me wrong. And I look at the chart and I say, well, if it goes down to this level, I'll be proven wrong and I'll just get out and move on to the next one. And so I'm monitoring, uh, I, I do my risk management, that determines my position size. And I take my position and then I just have to monitor the trade for an exit signal. So this is the tool that I use. This is, uh, a program called TradeStation. TradeStation is a, an American software company. It's actually owned by the Japanese now, but it was started in Florida probably 20 years ago, maybe more. And um, it's a great tool because it allows me to program my own indicators and processes. So I don't, um, I don't own TradeStation. I have no affiliation with them. I just use it. I think if you want to make a career out of day trading, it is the best tool out there for that. It's not the only tool, but it's the one that I have programmed to look for my indicators. So I'm going to um, run this little video here, which shows how this thing blinks and does things during the trading day. So this was recorded on uh, April 9th, and you can well, see... Shorts are valid. But sorry, I got my voice running there. I'm just going to turn my voice off. So you can see that it's blinking a lot. I just did a screen recording of how it runs. And what it's doing is grabbing trades as they were grabbing data and highlighting the action candles. So I'm going to pause the video now. Whoops. Just pause it right there. So I'm just going to explain what you're seeing here. So this screen right here is my buy screen, and this is my short sell screen. At the start of every day, I determine whether I want to be a buyer or a short seller. Okay. And then the computer is going through thousands of stocks looking for action candles and it will print or highlight them 
when when the computer finds it and it finds it in real time within you know less than a second so if you see a time here that means that it has found an action candle so these were all the stocks that found buy action candles at 932 there you can see the time and then at 934 it found three more and so ATAI was one of the stocks that I bought on uh, Wednesday I think it was Wednesday whatever the ninth was and then on the, over on this side, we have the shorts. So again, you know, a stock like AMD was found at 932. But in addition to finding the action candle, it also does the risk management component. It shows here what the entry price is. It shows how many shares to buy for $100 of risk. And it shows the capital required to buy 100 shares without using margin. And of course, as traders, we can actually use margin, especially when day trading, which means we actually only have to put up one third of this amount. So if we think about, um, I don't know, we'll look at CERN, its buy price was at $64.62 to buy 70 shares, and that would require capital of 4,523 before margin, so the actual amount of capital with margin would be one third of that or about $1,500 to take that trade. So it's all calculating that in real time because if I had to mentally figure out position size and where I should what buy price and how many shares to buy, it's too difficult. So what we've done with this tool is done all the math for you so that you can just see, okay, 70 shares if I want to take $100 of risk. Now you may say, well, I actually want to take $200 of risk on each trade that I do. No problem, then you just double this number. All right, and so that's running in real time. This is my trading screen in my office. You can watch my trading screen because I run a webinar every day, all day long, where you can watch my screen. And in addition to watching my screen, I will talk you through the day. Most of my talking is in the first hour and then the last half an hour. But what I'm trying to do is when the time of the trade, when the trading time is most busy, which is the opening, really the opening half an hour, is not only is the computer looking at these stocks and finding the action candles, but I'm also coming on the microphone and saying, hey, ATAI is one of the better looking stocks right now. And so then my, my uh, people that are in my webinar will say, oh, that sounds good. Tyler thinks it's good. I see the action candle forming. And people will then uh, judge whether they want to take those trades or not. So anyway, this plays out every two minutes. There is a process that runs that um, updates, and I talk through the day. I, I really don't talk a lot through the middle of the day, but in the opening hour, I, I talk a fair amount. Um, and that's something I just started doing. I used to just let the algorithms run and, and people could make their own decisions. But I found for a lot of my students, they really liked or needed my experience and so i've started in the last few weeks actually saying hey atai is one of the better looking ones amd looks like a good short that sort of thing all right so that's my tool for day trading now we can then look at those charts just to see how that played out so atai made its its uh main action candle right there or was it there can't tell what time it may have been this one. It was 9.34. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Either one worked. And that's what I liked about it. Notice that nobody cared about this stock. It was totally dead the previous two, three days. And then it came alive. Volume was coming in. Price action was coming in. And because I have this super powerful tool, I can find that stock before most people. You know, most traders might find it here because it takes them four, six, eight minutes to find that stock. But with the power of the computer and the algorithm, I can find it early. And that's a huge difference. You know, to find it down here at $1.20 is a heck of a lot better than finding it up here at $1.80. That's a 50% move already. And same time, we can make money from stocks going down. This was a short sell on AMD, and it had the action candle there. I use a gray dot for short sell action candles. You can see the little gray dot there. I don't know what's wrong with AMD, but what I know is that the sellers were acting aggressively. Their volume traded on that two-minute interval was strong, and the stock was moving down quite significantly for this stock. Certainly on a percentage basis, not moving as much as ATAI did to the upside, but relative to its normal history, you can see that that really stands out compared to 
what was normal the previous day. And if I put that chart in front of you, any person with a little bit of common sense and, and listening to what I'm teaching you today would say, yeah, that's abnormal. The problem is, if you don't have the tool to find it, you might not find it until here or here. And by that time, you've missed out on a lot of the move. And that's where the computer has really given me an edge. So my process for finding action candles is I use TradeStation. Now, I can teach people how to trade or use TradeStation. That's part of what I teach people. And for the last 10 years, I've really focused on teaching my students how to use TradeStation to do this for themselves. I found that I could give people more of an advantage in the market if I just built the tool that did all the work. And so in, over the last two years, uh, my programmers and I have been building out this platform that you saw just a moment ago, which really does the work for us. It's all automated. I don't have to move my mouse around anymore. I don't have to um, cut and paste and you know drop lists into different indicators. If, if you took my course three or four years ago, you will know that we had a process that took a few minutes to run through all the data. And, and the result of that was that we sometimes were a minute or two later than we are today. So nowadays I've completely automated it using TradeStation. I'm happy to give my students my TradeStation indicators, but really if you wanna make maximize your profit in the market, using that active live service that where you're watching my screen is really a lot more effective because you can focus on entering orders instead of running the processes to find trades. And so we use TradeStation to find swing trades as well. Uh, just to go back to that screen here, this screen over here is our swing trading screen. It doesn't update, uh, doesn't do its first update until 13 minutes after the market opens. And so this particular video was shot at 9.33 in the morning. You can see down in the bottom right the time there. And so we hadn't run our first swing trading scan yet. But what that window does, this one right here, is it looks for 13 minute action candles. People always ask why 13 minute? I do that because there are 30, which is a nice round number, 30 13 minute action candles in a day or, or uh, price candles in a day. All right, so getting back to where we were, um, you know, that's the screen. Here you can see the 13 minute action candles. These are all the stocks that made 13 minute action candles on. I'm not sure what day this was because it's cut off the time, but I think it was April 9th as well. And here's the time that they made the action candle, this column right here. So you can see there was a group at 10.09 in the morning, 10.22. And not all of them were worth taking. We still evaluate the chart. And because it's a, a swing trade, we have a little more time to evaluate the chart. But that's the tool I use if I want to be an active swing trader. Now I'm going to show you in next uh, in just a moment here a less active swing trading strategy where we actually do our work in the evenings or in the final half an hour of the trading day. And there we go. So another strategy that I do is called the action breaks strategy. This strategy looks for stocks making action candles in stocks that have really been doing poorly lately, stocks that have been in downward trends. Because what I find is that stocks that break their downward trends with abnormal activity often reverse their trends and go into an upward trend. And so we wanna find stocks making daily action candles. We then assess the chart to ensure some other criteria are satisfied. I'll show you where I teach you how that, what those other rules are in a moment. And then again, we do our risk management. Capital preservation is our number one goal. We take our trade based on position sizing from the risk management calculation. And then we just monitor the trade over the days or perhaps weeks for an exit signal. So if we use this as an example, this is NM, which I showed you earlier on the stock scores chart. That was the earlier example. And there was an action candle right there. There was also one right here. Both were good. Both were breaking a downward trend line. So I could draw a trend line like that. And then this one like that. And so we had the break of a downward trend line with an action candle. Again, if I put this chart in front of you, it's pretty easy to see that something's going on there. But the challenge is to be able to look at the right chart. And so that's where the tool comes in. So the process that I use to find action breaks, I do one of two ways. One, I can do it with my active live webinar in the final half an hour. I run some processes for all of my subscribers and I identify the stocks that I think have the best potential. So this stock was one of the examples that I, or one of the stocks that I found and I highlighted on that particular day. So people didn't have to do the work, I did the work for them. If you wanna do the work yourself or if you want to 
uh, do it in the evenings rather than in the final 30 minutes of the trading day, then you're going to use the stock scores market scan tool. So we're going to jump over there now and I'm going to go to the market scan and we're going to run the action breaks scan. So you can see right here, it says action candle breaks. So this is a tool that I developed uh, probably almost 20 years ago now. It's been updated a lot along the way, but the first version was 20 years ago. It's a huge time saver. Instead of riding my bike down to the Alberta Stock Exchange, hanging out there for two or three hours, finding the stocks that are behaving abnormally, riding my bike back home, pulling down computer charts, checking those charts and trying to get my orders in, I can now just click on a button and get a list in less than a second. So these are nine stocks that on Friday made action candles. Doesn't mean that they're all worth buying. In fact, most of them will not be. So we have to assess the chart. So I can make now a process where I say, I'm gonna view this in a slideshow view, click on go. And I can look at these charts to see if they have the kind of pattern that I want. This one, I think it's okay, but it's not quite promising enough. So I go to the next one. This one hasn't broken its downward trend yet. So I go to the next one. Also not broken its trend, nice strong volume coming in, but still inside its downward trend. This stock had some real life on Friday. I would say it's a bit of a long shot, but if it works, it could be a huge winner. This is TRNX. I'm gonna say it has a 50-50 chance of working, but again, if it works, this stock could go from where it is now at a dollar to $4. So you have to assess, is it worth the risk? If you have a 50% chance of it doubling or a 50% chance of cutting in half, that's, that's an even bet, right? But if you have a 50% chance of it going up by 400% and a 50% chance of it going down by 50%, well, that actually makes some sense. You have a positive expected value with that kind of a trade. And that's some of the things that I teach people to evaluate when you're looking at opportunities. Uh, this stock was pretty strong during the day on Friday, but it actually fell off at the end of the day. And so I don't like how it looks based on that. And so this, that's the process. So I just go through these charts looking for patterns. And you can see that I'm going through them very quickly because it's actually very specific things that I'm looking for. And I don't really waste a lot of time looking at a chart if it doesn't have some of those key things. Now, this one is actually the best one we've seen. This stock breaking through resistance. This is a pattern called a rectangle consolidation. It has abnormal volume, abnormal price action. It recently broke its downward trend line back there. This is actually what, something I call a bottom fish. It's a certain pattern I look for. And this stock has about a 65% chance of working its way back up to here. And a 35% chance of rolling over and being a loser. So is that, the, is that a trade worth taking? From a risk management standpoint, it is. It makes sense. 65% chance of making you know, maybe $10 a share or a 35% chance of losing $2 a share. I'll, I'll take that trade. All right, so that's the thinking that I use when I'm doing those swing trades. And that's the tools that I use to find them. All right, let's keep on moving. Let's talk about the position trading strategy, something called abnormal breaks. So this strategy looks for stocks making abnormal moves on the daily interval. So it has to have an abnormal day to the upside with abnormal volume. If you read my weekly newsletter on stockscores.com, you will know that most of my picks in that newsletter are using this. If you don't read that, I encourage you to sign up for it. It's free. Once a week, I put out an email. It goes to thousands of people. And it's just to highlight um, different ideas about trading the market. And um, I always highlight one to three stocks a week that I think have potential. If you want to sign up for it, just go to Stock Scores Analysis. Click on Free Weekly Newsletter. Just enter your email address in there and click on Submit and you are now going to get that weekly email. You can look at back issues in there as well. So with this particular position trading strategy, abnormal breaks, I'm looking for the abnormal activity from predictive patterns. And there are six components of a predictive pattern that I can teach you very quickly. They are support resistance, optimism, pessimism, price volatility, and abnormal activity. And if you can understand those six things, you can evaluate any chart in 10 seconds. And what I do as a teacher is I teach you what to, what to look for. And it'll take some practice. It maybe takes a month of practicing until you get to the point where you can look at any chart and evaluate it quickly. But it's not that complicated. Six things that you have to understand. Now again, once you find a valid opportunity, you size your positions based on the risk management formulas, 
And then you just monitor those positions either daily or weekly because we have a, a weekly version of this strategy as well. And if you see an exit signal, you exit. All right, so let's jump in and uh, well, let's first look at a, an example or two and then we'll do some market scans and see if we can find something worth considering. So this stock met the criteria of this abnormal break strategy on this day. This is uh, Canopy Growth, a cannabis stock listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange. I think it's also listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And I don't know anything about cannabis stocks. I don't know anything about this company. But what I know is there was abnormal trading activity on that day. Abnormal price, abnormal volume. You can see a little spike in our stock score there. And that's what told me there was something good going on. Now, it doesn't look like much, but on a percentage basis, that's a $45 entry price. And it went up to $65. It actually gave us a sell signal two days ago when it broke down through the support zone. But even that, $45 to $55 is, you know, what is that, 22% gain? Pretty awesome for a relatively short-term trade. And if you wanted to be really aggressive, there was another exit signal there at 60 let's call it $60. So that's a 33% gain in two or three weeks. So that's the kind of trades that I like to do for position traders. How much time does it take? You have to do this scan each day that you want to. You don't have to do it every day, but if you don't, if you want to find something, you have to look for it, right? So the process will take a beginner 20 minutes, uh, someone who's done it for a while, five to 10 minutes. And if you can find five or 10 minutes a day or five or 10 minutes a week, you can apply this strategy. I think I've got one more example here. Yep, here's Village Farms. I talked about this on the radio with Mike today. So there was the abnormal action, breaking a downward trend line, abnormal activity. This has been a huge winner. I think it's the best performing stock on the TSX this year. $6 to a top of 24. First exit signal was there. Second exit signal was there. And if it breaks down below that point at $17, we'll have an even stronger exit signal. All right, so how do we find these? Or let's go look for them before we do upcoming events. So let's go back to the market scan tool and we will run the abnormal break scan. I have a Canadian version and a US version. Uh, we'll try Canada first. I don't know if there was anything going on. Only three stocks on Friday. Let's take a look at their charts. So I can also look at these little mini charts just to get through charts quicker. Uh, I like this stock. It actually gave its entry signal a few days ago. So the entry signal on this one was right there. And it's already gone from, that's around $1.50 to $1.64. I like it if it pulls back. And one of the things I talked about on the radio today with some of these energy names is that they've had a pretty good run over the last five days. I think you wait for this stock to make a pullback, maybe $1.50. It starts to make some sense because I think there's a good chance it will get there uh, next week. But, you know, there's one candidate anyway. And Hydro one, no, I don't really like that. So I'm looking for very specific things in the pattern. Let's try the US version. So we'll run this scan again, do abnormal breaks US. Watch how fast this is. It just went through the entire US stock market and found 36 stocks that meet those criteria. So now we got to view the charts and I will um, do that for you. This one's pretty good, APHB. I'd give this a six and a half out of 10, which means I think it has a 65% chance of moving higher. It's got the abnormal action, abnormal volume breaking a little downward trend line. Um, my only concern is whether this resistance holds up. I'm also a little bit concerned by the fact that it's a 34 cent stock because uh, that tends to be a lower quality and you know it's obviously had something really go wrong with the company back here. It looks like it's a biotech uh, company. They probably had a, a drug that was in trials or something and things didn't work out so they kind of failed. So it's always a little bit of an overhang when you have that past failure. But still, like I said, a six and a half out of 10. So let's continue to cycle through and I'll pause. This one we looked at earlier, it's really a, got a huge scale because it's fallen so far already. But I think it, you know, it's at a dollar right now, 99 cents. Can it get to $2? Good chance. Probably give that a 65% chance of working. I uh, don't like that one. So you can see that I can go through these pretty fast because I practiced and in the interest of time, I will go through fast. I will stop when I see one that I think is worth talking about. Uh, here's an energy company, WPX. Looks pretty good. I'd give this a six and a half as well. It's broken out from its trading range. It's been you know, trading under $14 for one, two, three, three and a half months. 
For three and a half months, investors said, we don't think the fundamentals of this company are worth more than $14. But on Friday, investors said, actually, we found a reason to pay more than $14. And there was quite a bit of volume traded as well, one of the highest volume days of the year. So that tells us something. If you have that stock in front of you at the chart in front of you, it says, yeah, it's obvious, but you need the tool to find them. Uh, here's Parsley Energy again. Sometimes you'll get stocks coming up on multiple scans. We already found that one. Uh, Matador Resources, I like that. Give that a six and a half out of 10. So breaking from rising bottoms through resistance with abnormal activity. That's a pattern called an ascending triangle. It's quite predictive, like that. Let's see if there's any more here. May as well give you all of them. There's not too many to look at. And again, you know, the reason I'm not stopping on every one is I just I have very specific things that I look for. And I'll teach you what to look for. It's all covered in videos that I'll show you in a moment. But it does take a little bit of practice. EOG is okay. I'd give it a 6 out of 10. Probably has some resistance at 110 that maybe holds it back. Fang, it's okay. Give it a 6. JP Morgan, give that a 6. Just take a look at the three-year chart of JP Morgan. Yeah, no, I'd give it a 5. Upside's limited. All right, so that's the process. Oh, one more page. Concho fell off at the end of the day. Don't like that. Disney overbought right now. I like Disney on a pullback, but I would not buy it here. I think it's probably going to pull back to at least 125. Pioneer. Let's just take a look at the three-year weekly on Pioneer. Yeah, not good enough for me. McDonald's, pretty good. Well into its upward trend already. Good continuation of the trend likely. Let's give it a 6 out of 10. Markle. $1,000 stock, it's okay. Give it a five and a half. All right, so that's the process. Easy with the tool. It takes a lot of work if you don't have the tool. Upcoming events. So let's just quickly do that before we get into some more stuff. And then at the end, of course, I will take your stock questions as many as I can. And so start thinking about some stocks that you want me to take a look at, and we'll just walk through the analysis. But I do have some more events coming up. There's more webinars over the next few weeks. And for those in Calgary and Vancouver or, or willing to travel to those places, I'm going to do some live presentations where I'll walk you through some of my things like I've talked about today, but maybe a little bit more in depth. So I'll do an event in Calgary on, let's just go take a look here. We go to the uh, trader training area on stock scores, go down to upcoming events. And here you can see the presentation. So there's the one we're doing right now. So presentation in Calgary this coming Wednesday uh, Wednesday, April 17th at 7 p.m. at the Sheraton Cavalier, which is up in Northeast Calgary. I'm sure lots of you in Calgary know about that hotel. I've done presentations there for 15 years probably. Uh, it's free to attend, and I will be there in person. I haven't done a live presentation in five years, and I felt like uh, maybe perhaps because this is my 30th year of trading, I should get out and see some of the people face-to-face -face that I've been you know, meeting online. So we're going to come out on um, Wednesday. 7 till 8.30. Got a webinar on Monday, April 22nd, how to be a successful investor. We'll focus more on position trading. And then the following Tuesday, Tuesday, April 23rd, I will be in Vancouver at UBC Robson Square. So we all know where Robson Street is in Vancouver. Uh, UBC Robson Square is underneath the ice rink there. And uh, you go in the building, down the stairs, and there's uh, some great rooms down there where I'll be doing a presentation as well. 7 till 8.30 on Tuesday, April 23rd. And you can see there's a few more webinars coming up as well. So register for them all. They're all free. Uh, this Focus Live, I'll talk about that in a moment. This one's not free, uh, but I'll talk about that in a, in a minute here. Another way to get some good information for free is the Stock Scores YouTube channel. Uh, every week I upload at least one video. And so go to YouTube, search for Stock Scores and you will find my uh, channel there. I've got lots of videos, lots of good insight into different trading topics. Great way to take your learning to the next level. And um, best thing to do is subscribe to the channel. I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers, so I'm, I'd love it if I could get to 5,000 this week. So subscribe to the channel, click on the notifications bell so that you get email updates when I upload a new video. All right, so how can I help you 
be a more profitable trader. I've got all kinds of things that I've built over the last 20 years to help people do that. It's one of the things that I enjoy. I got an email the other day from a fellow who said that he was retiring from from a sales job he's been doing for 40 years and he's uh, able to retire because he's making more money trading than he's making in his sales job and uh, he sent a very nice email to me thanking me he's one of my students from quite some time ago I'm not sure how many years ago but I would say at least 10 and those kinds of things are rewarding far beyond what I can charge you to learn my approach I, I love getting emails like that so if anyone else has uh, those kind of stories I'd love to hear them anyway what I've done is created online education resources for you to learn my strategies there's theory there's my actual strategies explaining the processes the rules that sort of thing I'm also doing some live classes in May again I haven't done a live class in five years so I felt like I wanted to get out and meet people face to face again instead of being this little troll that sits in his office so Calgary May 4th I will do an all-day class at the University of Calgary uh, Vancouver May 11th I will do an all-day class at the Simon Fraser downtown campus these are classes you have to pay for and I'll explain the pricing in a minute for those who cannot attend in Calgary or Vancouver I will record the whole day eight-hour video and it will be available online for those who wish to purchase that as well and again I'll go through the pricing of that in a moment so tools I've created the market scan tool it cost me I don't know, a quarter of a million dollars at least to build that tool. The Active Live tool where you can watch my trading screen, there's two or three years of work almost daily to build that and make it work right. I have trade station indicators for those who just want to do it on their own. They don't want to watch my screen. They want to um, run the process themselves. So I make that available to my students as well. And I think the most important thing that I can do for people that take one of my courses is give them support. So, you know, if you're looking at, Disney let's say and you think it's a buy you email me and say Tyler is Disney was on the abnormal break scan I think I should buy it I'll give you my opinion I can't tell you whether you should buy it or sell it I'm not a licensed investment advisor but I can help you assess whether the rules are being met and um, I do that for my students I can't do it for everybody there's just there I mean there's thousands of people that use stock scores obviously it would be um, I just don't have enough of me to go around, but I can do it for the students I have because I only teach about 100 people a year. So let's talk a little bit about that online learning resource. It's called the Stock Scores Education Center, and I'll jump back to the Stock Scores website. We'll go to Trader Training, down to Education Center, and here we have a collection of videos, lessons, assignments, and tests for different uh, cost zones so the getting started area that's free it's just videos in getting started if you want to learn theory then you have to take the investor or active trader course and we start off with the theory so remember I said that we have to evaluate whether an action candle has a good chart pattern or not so these first two uh, lessons here the six elements of chart patterns and predictive chart patterns they have a written lesson which I can click on and read they have a video which I can click on and watch and here's some snazzy music okay and then we have a uh, lesson or assignment maybe this is yeah there's the assignment and then we have a test and I got 10 out of 10 hooray for me okay so that's how the education center works um, actually I should just show you the the uh, strategy area because the actual strategies are taught in the investor and active trader zone and so if you want to learn my day trading strategy there's a written lesson and a video I won't show those because I don't want the rules to be given out to everyone but they're right there if you are a subscriber to that um, education package then you get access to it okay so that's the stock scores education center so to learn my approach you have a choice you can focus on investor content investor strategies so that's if you want to be you know doing your work once a day or maybe once a week you don't want to be a day trader or a swing trader then the stock scores investor course is the one for you if you do have an interest in being a more active trader maybe not even a day trader but at least a swing trader then I cover day and swing trading in the active trader course if you take the active trader course you also get the investor content so this includes this um, but this does not include this so it's just a case of what you would like to do 
And then I'm gonna complement the online learning with that focus live class coming up in May. And so again, Calgary, Saturday, May 4th, I will do an eight hour class, 8.30 till 4.30 on May 4th. And then Vancouver, the same class, May 11th. And for those that can't attend in one of those cities, I will record the whole day. I'll probably record both days and I'll make those videos available um, after the Vancouver class. And so you can purchase that. You have to be an active trader member or an investor member in order to come to the live class in May. You can become an investor member or an active trader member today if you want, or tomorrow or a week from now. As long as you are an active trader member before the class, May 4th for Calgary or May 11th for Vancouver, you can come to the class. It's a small upgrade fee, which I'll talk about in just a moment. So my live training that I'm doing this spring starts May 1st. So let's say you say, okay, I want to take the investor course. I, I don't really want to be a day trader, but I do want to learn how to manage my portfolio better, maybe retire a few years earlier, whatever your goals are. Then here's the process. Step one is you sign up for the online training and you can do that today. You can do that a week from now. Um, there's some incentives to do it before May 26th. I'll talk about that in a moment. You're going to get access to two classes that I'm going to do Wednesday, May 1st and Thursday, May 2nd. Those classes at six o'clock till about 7.30 Pacific Daylight Time, I will take you through the theory, how to read chart patterns, risk management, sizing your positions, when to sell, you know, the things that you need to understand. And so we're going to do an hour and a half each evening. I used to do it on a Saturday morning for three hours. It gets a bit long, so I thought I'd break it up this time. Those will all be recorded, so if you can't attend on Wednesday, May 1st, I will do a video recording of it as well. And then we're going to practice doing market scans. So today, together, we did some market scans, but we will go through it more slowly for three days. Monday, May 6th, Tuesday, May 7th, Wednesday, May 8th, about an hour it'll take each evening. And I will walk you through the process and maybe we'll find some stocks to buy the next day. In fact, usually we find some and, and I've had actually people tell me that they paid for their course just from the market scanning we did that that week. So maybe we'll get lucky with finding some great opportunities. Never know. So that's uh, the second stage. So anyone taking the investor or the active trader course and registering before April 26 will get those two things for free. Get all those bonus online classes included. In addition, if you take the active trader course, you get all that for free, but you also get a free month of my active trader live service where you can watch my trading screen you can apply it this month, next month, four months from now, whenever you feel you're ready. I will give you a free month where you can listen to me talk. I'll highlight the stocks that I like the best. You can watch my screen as the algorithms are running. It really is an awesome tool. I, I think anyone who's ever day traded and, and will watch this tool in, in practice, it's, it's amazing. It's been a huge help for me. Um, so you get my commentary, trade ideas that I see. Um, I have the automated search process running. And then at the end of the day, I also review the swing trades and I review the previous day's trades just to summarize the performance and you know, focus in and more of an education just to make sure everyone is understanding and learning from what we did the previous day. So the special offer then is as follows. Anyone who registers for the investor or the active trader course before Saturday, April 26th at 9 p.m. Pacific time, We'll get those overview classes and the market scanning sessions for free. So the overview class is Wednesday, May 1st and Thursday, May 2nd. And I will record those as videos so you can watch them 100 times later if you like. You will also get access to those market scanning sessions. I also record those so you can watch them later if you weren't able to attend live. It's better to attend live because you can put the, you know, maybe take some of those trades the following day. And then uh, there's the Active Trader Live, which is the webinar where you can watch my trading screen, hear me trade through the day, and you get a free trading month to apply whenever you're ready. You just have to do it as a calendar month. So, you know, you could start in May, for example, if you wanted, or you could take it in June, July, August, whenever. It's up to you. So course pricing. Investor class, Canadian dollars, $2,495. I have been teaching for 20 years. I have been charging the same price for 15 years. The price today at $24.95 Canadian is the same price I charged 15 years ago. And I sometimes think maybe it's time to raise the prices, but so far 
this time is not going to see a price increase. The active trader course, which again includes the investor course, is $34.95. If you take the investor course, so you, maybe you took the investor course a year ago and you want to upgrade to the active trader course now, it's a $1,250 upgrade. You can email me and I'll tell you how to do that. In addition, you can add on, if you take the course, the investor or the active trader course, you can add on the focus live in May. So you can come to the live class for $4.95 in Calgary or Vancouver. Or if you can't come to those cities, then you can just do it as a video version. All right. I'm, there's a possibility that I'll be able to stream it so that you can actually watch it live and ask questions if you do the video version. I just can't guarantee it yet because I don't know what kind of a quality internet connection I'm going to have. But I'd like to do that where if you wanted to, if you can't come live, you can um, watch it live on your screen. And the benefit of doing it that way is that you can ask questions as well. Whereas if you're watching it as a recorded video later, you'd have to email me your questions. I'll see if I can make that happen. So how can I help you succeed? I've got incredible in-depth online education resources. And it's really the product of teaching this stuff for 20 years. I've learned a lot about how people learn. And I've simplified things a lot. It's way simpler now than it was 10 years ago. In addition, I'm doing those live online classes in May, which will bring your learning quicker. It'll help you not procrastinate and get down to business. The market's good. This is the best time of the year for the market. The spring is always the best time of the year. So it's a great time to be doing this. We're going to do those live market scanning webinars so you can see what I look for, my process step by step. Live classes in Calgary and Vancouver. Again, I haven't taught a live class in five years, so this is a great opportunity. I don't know when I'll do one again. Active live service where you can watch me every day, watch the trades that I'm taking, watch uh, or listen to my voice as I highlight those that I like the best. You know, some of the stocks that we picked last week, I think I don't think we had a losing day last week with, this, with the stocks that I highlighted. There's, you know, two or three, four stocks every day that were just the, the ideal setups where we, it's what I call looking for alpha. And, um, you know, it's just great moves. PHUN, um, ATAI, was the previous week, I guess. Uh, RBZ on Friday, CRTM or CTRM, I can't remember, on Friday. So there's lots of action these days. I think most importantly is, and I think what differentiates me from a lot of people, is that I don't teach a lot of, of people how to trade. And so that allows me to support people a lot better. You know, I've been doing this for 30 years. I've been teaching for 20. I have a lot of experience and I never had someone uh, stump me with a question. I can always give some insight from my personal experience that will help you become a better trader. And I really strive to make people successful so that I get those emails that make me warm and fuzzy. All right. So how to uh, sign up? You can sign up at stockscores.com. I'll show you the link in a minute. But before I do that, I'd just like to launch a poll. I just have to start it up here, so bear with me for a second. So we did one poll already. We'll do another one here. And this is if you just would like a follow-up email. I don't like to bug people a lot. So if you would like me to send you a follow-up email in the next few days with more information on the investor course or the active trader course, just click that off. Um, and if you don't want an email, I won't send one to you. Um, but it would help me just to know what your interests are. And like I say, I don't do high pressure sales or anything. If you want an email, I'll send it to you. All right, so I'll leave that up for another 30 or 40 seconds. And this is about the time that you can start thinking about your stock questions and um, put them in there. I've already got lots of people entering there, so I will have to make my window nice and big here so that I can see all the symbols. Now, there's a lot of people in the webinar today, and so it's going to be a bit of a challenge to look at them all, but I'll try to do 10 at least. And if nothing else, you'll just see how I go through the thought process with um, analyzing these stocks. All right, so we'll take down the poll now. Thanks for answering. And like I said, you'll get an email from me in the next few days. Close that down. So if you want also more information about the courses, just go back to the website, go to Trader Training. Right at the top there, learn how to trade. There's a video on the Active Trader course, what it covers. There's also a video on the Investor course, as well as some more detail 
about what's included. Now, there's no mention here of that live class in May, so just keep in mind that I will be doing that live class in May as well. And this is, you know, like I said, I haven't done it in five years. So if you'd like to learn it from me personally, and you can make it out to one of those cities or maybe watch the video version, um, it's a great opportunity for me to just take you through it. You're going to learn it in eight hours, whether you like it or not. I'll force you. <clears throat> Here's my contact information. I welcome your questions. My email, tylerb at stockscores.com. You can follow me on Twitter. I put out a few tweets a week usually. My Twitter handle, at stockscores. And then I think most importantly, the YouTube channel. Help me get to that 5,000 subscribers. Let's try to do it today. Everyone go there. If you're not a subscriber already, subscribe to the channel, and uh, then I'll feel better about myself tonight because I'll have 5,000 friends. All right, so let's uh, take a look at your questions. I'm going to bring up the Stock Scores website and try and uh, read through some of these. So one question I'm seeing, TradeStation versus Thinkorswim. I think TradeStation is way more robust. I haven't really used Thinkorswim, but I have looked at it a little bit. So I can't give you a really educated answer, but I certainly, I can't program my indicators with Thinkorswim, and that's why I like TradeStation. All right, now I've got a ton of questions and I know I'm gonna miss some, so if I miss your question and it's really important to you to get an answer, just email me, okay? So let's take a look at, um, so one question is what would make me think some of these stocks were a seven or an eight? So a lot of those energy names that I looked at, the reason I didn't give them a seven or higher is because the price action wasn't that abnormal. So to me, a seven or eight has to be pretty perfect. Uh, I, I don't give out nines, by the way. I just think there's no such thing as a stock that has a 90% chance of working. 80%, pretty rare. 70, I find probably three to five 70% chances a week uh, doing the different processes that I do. So, All right, so let's take a look at some charts. First one, AMRN. And this is, uh, just bear with me for a second. I'm just trying to update something here. So AMRN, if you own this, I think there's no reason to sell it. I don't see a reason to buy it. It's uh, To me, it's a hold. It's got optimism. It's done well, but until it can break out of this pattern, this is called an ascending triangle pattern, and it'll be a little more clear if I make it a three-year weekly chart. Uh, and even there, it's not. You know, it's, it's a stock that made a huge jump. It's pretty volatile still. I think it probably pulls back maybe to 18 and then bounces and goes back to 22. Somewhere between 19 and 18, it should bounce back. So again, it's a hold, but I wouldn't initiate a position. All right, next one. And by the way, if it's a if it's a Canadian stock, please let me know that it's listed in Canada because I have to put a prefix. So for example, Vermilion, T.VET, is the Canadian listing. And the only difference is that it's in Canadian dollars. So I like this. I'd give it a six and a half. I think it's more likely to go higher than lower. It doesn't show me everything that I like to see as a stock that I would buy. But the energy sector in Canada looks pretty solid, and I think this chart is decent. It's not perfect. It's got some things that it needs to do. It's got a very good yield, 8.1%. I would worry about whether that is safe because it's an abnormally high yield, and there's some threat perhaps that they'll have to cut their yield. But uh, chart-wise, yeah, I, I like it. I think it's more likely to go to 42 than to 32. Okay, next one is Meg. Let's try Meg. Now, is that the, must be the Canadian listing. So Meg Energy, I don't like this one as, as much as the last. It is in the energy sector. That's a positive. I think the sector's bottoming. But I'd give this a 5 out of 10. It's going to fight with its downward trend line here. It had that big gap, which says that there was something wrong. So I'd give it a 5 out of 10. Let's try GD. Uh, let's try SMH. So SMH is the uh, semiconductor holders. It's basically an ETF that owns the semiconductor stocks as a group. Uh, I think it's a good hold. I would not buy it here. I think it's risky to buy it here. The entry point, just to go through basic chart analysis, downward trend line, build of rising bottoms, action candle there, that was the entry point. And so now you're getting the reward for having taken the risk back in, you know, third week of January. So that's uh, my thought on that. Let's try a venture listed stock. So I've got V, what is it, V dot EGLX, V dot EGLX. Um, 
I'm going to take a look at the longer term chart here. Oh, it's a pretty new listing, so we don't have the stock scores calculated yet. We need um, 200 trading days to get the stock scores to calculate. So uh, we have optimism because there's rising bottoms. We have resistance here. Looks like the company came public at, or maybe it was a new listing of some sort, at around $1.55, $1.60. We're bumping up against that price. I think it probably does this, comes back, does this, does this, and if it can break out through that resistance level, then I like it. Today, it's a hold. I wouldn't buy it here. All right, uh, ACB. So this is a cannabis company, Aurora Cannabis. Uh, I think it's a hold, but a cautious one. It's building some, oh, I've lost my drawing tool, unfortunately. Let me just see if I can get it back here. Hold on a second. Really helps me to be able to draw on these charts for you. So I use a tool, if you want to use this, it's really awesome. It's called Zoomit, and it's, I think it's free. Maybe it's $20, but just uh, do a, it's, it's actually owned by Microsoft. And just do a search for Zoomit, Z-O-O-M-I-T. And what it allows you to do is I just hit Control D, and then I can hold down the Shift key and draw a straight line on my screen. And, or I can freehand if I want. I can change the color to blue. I can change it back to red. It's really a, a cool little tool. And like I said, I think it's free or maybe $20. Anyway, that said, the stock ran away from its trend line. It's pulled back to it. We expect that to happen. It's now at the trend line. It should bounce and continue upward. If it bounces, then I think it remains a hold, maybe a cautious buy. It's going to run into resistance up here. If it breaks this trend line, I'd be worried. And I would probably think about selling it if it broke down through that trend line. Okay, do I buy Canadian stocks? Yeah, when when the time is right. The Canadian market hasn't been awesome lately, but um, certainly right now I see a lot of good-looking Canadian stocks in the energy sector. So one energy name that's being asked about here is Baytex. So this is listed in the U.S. and Canada. Let's take a look at the Canadian listing, T.BTE. And here we have a nice, whoops, sometimes it doesn't let me draw the line exactly the way I want. Let me try again here. We have a, it's called a pennant pattern. Broke out of the pennant this week. That's good. You see the volume coming in. Like I was saying on the radio today, I like what these stocks have done this week. I just think they probably pull back before they go higher. And so you could buy half a position here and then maybe wait for a pullback. It could come down to 260, 270 and bounce. Uh, one of the reasons I say that is I think enter or the actual price of oil is a little bit extended. Um, I'll be doing my market minutes video for YouTube later today, probably, or maybe tomorrow. And in that, I'll talk about the energy sector. So make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and, and watch my analysis of the overall markets, which I do every week. Again, free content, why not? All right, so I like it. Uh, I'd give it a 6.5 out of 10, but maybe better on a pullback. Let's see. Gosh, there's a lot of questions coming in. Again, I'm not going to get to them all. I apologize. But like I said, there's just so many people here today, and which is awesome. Thanks for coming out. But uh, one question that I'm seeing, are course costs tax deductible? They are tax deductible against your capital gains as an interest and carrying charge. Um, you can't write them off personally, but you can write them off against your capital gains. What do I think about Cube? This is on the, um, the CSX. So for the Canadian Stock Exchange, you have to enter the symbols this way. Type in Cube, and then a dot, and then CN. It's a little bit different naming convention. Uh, what do I think about this? I don't think it's great. It's not terrible either, but I uh, broke a downward trend line there. That was good. Now we're in this pullback. This is at least a rising bottom. I think it needs to break that pullback. Then I'll like it. I won't love it, but I'll like it. If that can happen, maybe it goes higher. I'd give it a 6 out of 10 if it does that. For now, you know, it, it's not awesome the way it's been drifting lower. Let's try in Canna, T.ECA, T.ECA. I uh, like this one. I'd give it a six. I'll tell you why in a moment. So there's resistance. It's just trying to get through it, building optimism. Uh, it almost broke out, just hasn't quite done it yet, but the volume is a bit light. We don't see that abnormal volume where I see the institution saying, hey, we got to own this thing. It hasn't happened yet there. So that's why I give it a six out of 10. Uh, are there a lot of tra traders using similar products that are all following on another giving? Uh, what happened there? 
Um, there's not a lot of people using my method because I don't want a lot of people to use it. So, you know, one of the reasons I keep the price where it is is I don't want a ton of people using my tools. And that's important because if you had, you know, a thousand people all trying to do the same thing with the same stocks, you end up taking, uh, you know, chasing a large group and it becomes A, a self-fulfilling prophecy and B, hard to profit that way. So I actually purposely keep my my group relatively small. Um, it's mostly people in Western Canada. I mean, I have users all over the world, but it's mostly people here in Western Canada where I live because I don't really market myself outside of that area. And um, I think that's important because it means the tools work. And keep in mind, first and foremost, I'm using these tools myself. And if if the opportunity goes away because too many people are using them, then it hurts me uh, as well. So that's a little bit of thing there. So I'm going to do two more. Again, I'm trying to find, and I'm sorry, there are so many questions, like literally, I can't even read through them all. So let's try, I'm going to do WCP next, and then I'm going to do an American stock, because there's a few of those coming up as well. Where's my mouse gone? T.WCP, this is White Cap Resources. And I like this. Uh, I actually been looking at this through the week. It made a nice break from an ascending triangle. The only issue, as I said, uh, on a number of these energy names is I think it pulls back before it goes higher. And so I think this is a stock you can probably get five and a quarter or maybe. And so right now it's at 575, 576. That's a 10% downward move that I think is probable. It's certainly not certain, but probable. And I'd like to buy it on a pullback. All right, one more is an OTC listed stock, OPTI. So let's take a look at that, OPTI, and then we'll wrap it up for today, OPTI. I have a few final comments. Um, you know, it looks like a parking lot right now. The stock did really poorly through 2018. It's come back into a trading range. There's no sign of life here. So until we see a sign of life, this is a stock that I would avoid doesn't have much downside either. It's just going sideways. It needs something to get investors excited about it. All right. So again, I'm sorry I didn't get to all your questions. If you had something that you was really pressing that I missed, please email me. Let me put my email address up again. My email address, TylerB at StockScores.com. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on YouTube. Most importantly, I hope that you've enjoyed today's presentation. Sign up for some of those webinars or live events that are coming up next week. You can do that at the StockScores website. And hopefully we'll see you at some of those events, either in person or online. Um, hope you've got something out of this. Love your feedback and uh, trade well. Thanks, everyone.